Greetings all warriors of light and darkness and welcome back to another discussions video. I know it's been a while since I've done one of these and I'm really sorry about that. But with the release of 5.1 behind us and we got some more cutscenes, now seems a good time to really start this up again. Now first warning, there are going to be major spoilers for both Shadowbringers and Patch 5.1. Vows of Virtue, Deeds of Cruelty. So if you wanted to play through the game first without anything being spoiled for you, you might want to go and finish that one first before playing here. I can wait. It's YouTube, so you can come back at any time. You back? Good. Now, here today we are going to be talking about an important matter. Now, it was revealed to us in 5.1 that the connection between the Scions, minus the Warrior of Darkness, and their bodies have grown unstable. So we have Thancred, Yastola, Orianje, and the Twins who have been called away to the first for quite some time now, at least by the first standards. But now the light has been extinguished, the warrior is alive and well, so now it's really time for them to focus on how best to get back home. At the beginning of the patch, we learned from Cryo that the ether that is kind of connecting the Scions as their only way home to their bodies has grown unstable. Now the most notable change is with Thancred, who is kind of in the danger zone at this point, followed by Orianja and Yastola, who were nearing that level but not quite there yet, and then there's the twins who don't have any true notable differences yet, since it's still very slight, but it's only going to be a matter of time before that worsens as well. So Kryl admits that she isn't completely sure what's going to happen to the Scions if this continues, since nothing like this has ever happened before. All she knows for sure is, is that the longer that the other Scions remain away, the more unstable their ether is going to become, and it seems in all likeliness that if the connection between the Scions in the first and their bodies in the source becomes disconnected for some whatever reason, then they could end up trapped in the first forever. Now, as the Exarch later explained, what he did was use the power of the Crystal Tower to kind of cut a hole large enough between the two shards for the Warrior to come through back and forth. And because of that, the Warrior of Darkness is free to come back and forth between their two worlds whenever they want to with both their soul and body still connected, even with all their possessions are able to come through with them. As for the Scions who are there in the first, they weren't the intended target of the Exarch's spells, and they were sort of accidentally plucked up and dragged back to the first when the Exarch first tried to summon the Warrior of Light. But now, with everything pretty much taken care of, and now that they have this kind of hanging over their heads, that the connection with their bodies back at the source has grown this unstable, it's really kind of a hustle. They have to hurry to find a way back because, like I said, nobody knows entirely just yet what's going to happen if that connection is broken, but in all likelihood it could mean that the other Scions are trapped in the first forever. So they really need to hurry up and find a way to get back before the instability gets even worse. So long story short, at the end of this patch, they recruit the help of a new mole who knows more about Soulcraft than anyone else on Norvrot. And so they theorize that by storing their souls inside the White Orosite, they could be theoretically carried back to the Source through the Warrior. So basically, when the Exarch figured that the time was right, that they couldn't afford to wait around anymore, he reached out to try to grab the Warrior of Light and pull them forcibly to the first so that he could explain everything that was going on. And it was going alright, but something went wrong during the summoning process and accidentally grabbed the souls of those closest to the Warrior at that moment, and that was the Ions of the Seventh Dawn. So he pulled their souls literally from their bodies and forcibly dragged them back to the first. So the Scions who are in the first, they're not really there. They don't have true physical bodies. So they're really just like ghosts in this particular sense. They're just souls that were given a much more solid state. They're kind of drawing in the ether around them, and that is what's giving them a solid appearance. So, it's, so they're just souls that look and feel real while they're in the first. But they theorize that if they can somehow find a way to store their souls, let go of all the ether that's making them solid and just return them into more of a spectral form and then they can be transported inside the Orosites on the Warrior of Darkness's person. Only problem is they haven't yet figured out a way to safely store their souls inside the White Orosite just yet, and even if they do, they're not entirely sure how to transfer the souls from the White Orosites back into their bodies. 
but they still have a lot of testing and experiments to run before they're fully willing to try it. So for now, the Scions are going to be remaining behind in the first for just a little bit longer. From the history of these expansions, once the main scenario quest in the main game is finished, the next three patches are kind of like tying up the loose ends, and the third patch ending the storyline for the expansion, and the remaining five to four patches kind of set up the storyline for the next expansion. Now, for the Eden quest lines, we are helping Urianje, Thancred, and Reen slowly defeat the Sin Eater called Eden and restoring the elements to the rest of the world. So hopefully by the time that the Shadowbringer storyline is finished, then we can see like the rest of the world is slowly but surely returning to its natural state. So maybe not right away, but in a few decades, then the rest of the world will be covered with oceans, green lands, and have clear blue skies, like maybe forests starting to grow back. So that is something that I'm really, really looking forward to. Now, since we've only finished the first set of quests at the end of Shadowbringers, there's going to be at least two more series of quest lines involved there, at least judging by the formula that we're used to getting. So the next series of Eden quests should be coming out in 5.2, and the final one should be out in around 5.4. So it looks like the Scions are going to be sticking around in the first at least up to 5.4, where Eden is going to be finishing up. So I'm predicting that we're going to be getting this awesome final battle to officially close out the main story for Shadowbringers. And then comes the patches of 4.5 to 5.5 parts 1 and 2, which will just be setting up the story that's we're probably going to be heading off to Gollumall or someplace for the next expansion. But we're not going to be talking too much about that. So what I'm really curious about here is which one of the Scions is going to be left behind. I am predicting that at least one of the Scions is going to be remaining behind in the first. Basically, they're going to be giving up on their lives there in the source and kind of settle here in the first. And it really comes down to two candidates. First of all, let me rule out the people that I am 100% sure that they are going to be going back to the source. Alphino and Alize are probably going to go back to the source with the Warrior of Darkness. There's no doubt in my mind about that. Alvinod, in fact, is already ready to go back right now, now that matters and Yulmore have kind of cleared up enough that he feels like he doesn't need to stick around anymore. And I predict that once that we help the people at the inn, I don't really think that Alize is going to have any other reasons to want to stick around any longer either. And yeah, I think at this point it's safe to say that Uriandre is going to be returning to the source as well. He really has no reason to really be sticking around since most of the people that he kind of got to know here were the Fey folk. All right, he still needs to clean Bismarck's teeth before he comes. All right, so that's going to be his personal story before leaving the first. Dentistry for a giant's fairy whale. Oh, I hope they do that. I really, really want to see that. It would be hilarious. I think we need some more one-on-one -on -one time with the Scions. I'm just a sucker when it comes to that kind of sweetness. So moving on, Urianje, Alphino, and Alize, they're coming back to the source, no doubt about it. In my mind, they're definitely going to be coming back to their bodies eventually. But that still leaves the two whose future is questionable, and that would be Yastola and Thancred. Now out of all the Scions, they kind of have the most reasons for staying behind. We'll start first with Yastola. Now, it has been said that Yastola has grown fond of this world, and she spent about three years here already. And she kind of built up an entire new life in the Great Wood with the Knights Blessed. When she first appeared in the first, she read countless books in the Cabinet of Curiosity, and at first she trusted the Exarch. She kind of relied on him to kind of help her guide her around this place. However, after a while, she didn't like the fact that he was hiding so many secrets from her and the others, and that's kind of why she and Urianje kind of had a falling out as well. She has a difficult time trusting people who has a lot of secrets, and you don't really blame her. I mean, look what they were hiding here. And in the end, it was like, you know what? I'm going to go out there on my own. I'm going to see what I can do to help. I'm going to help in my own way and prepare however I see fit. I'll be ready when the Warrior of Light finally gets here, and then we can get this show on the road. But until then... I don't want anything to do with you guys. And so she just kind of left after that. And she eventually came to the Great Wood, and that's where this fire started from the Sin Eaters. The Knights Blessed were in terrible danger, so she kind of helped out there. So And she stayed with the Knights Blessed, helping them to rebuild. And eventually got to a point that the Knights Blessed came to trust her, they came to respect and admire her. They see her as kind of almost like their leader now, like as a 
main figurehead in their village. And so she stayed there, she built up this whole new life, she got to know the people there, and got very close with some people, like with Runar. Like, you could just see it in his face how much he cares about uh, Master Matoya. And after we reunite with Yestola, she says that she has grown fond of this place, she's excited to learn about all these secrets, she loves learning about the Ronkan Empire and seeing everything that this ancient civilization has to teach her. She's just someone who is thirsty for knowledge. She wants to go out there, learn how the world works, and learn everything she possibly can. And by the time that they finally leave the Great Wood, she's kind of hesitant. I mean, she's kind of torn. She wants to go with them. She knows it's the right thing to do. She wants to help save this world. This is what she was preparing for. But at the same time, she confesses to the others that she, there is a part of her that wants to stay. So leaving the Great Wood for the first time, that was, that was difficult enough for her. But she knows that a time is going to be coming, and hopefully soon, that she'll have to choose, like whether she wants to remain here in the first and continue learning, exploring, or staying with the Knights Blessed, or return to the source, where she originally comes from, where she still has friends and family there. So at this point, with Yastola, I'm 50-50 on it, in all honesty. I think maybe leaning a little bit towards more to the fact that she most likely will go back to the source, but at this point I still think it's up in the air, so it could go either way. But then there's Thancred. Now, out of all the Scions, I think that he is the most likely who's going to be staying behind. Now, Thancred, he was an orphan off the streets. He grew up on the streets of Limsa Lomensa, didn't have any other family. He was just kind of like this dirty little street urchin who kind of made his living stealing. And it was only when he tried to steal from Louis Swa when he first came to Eorzea that he was impressed by Thancred's skills and he kind of took him under his wing, gave him a chance to kind of get his life together. And Thancred, he really didn't have too many connections with people. I mean, in those earlier days, he confessed that he was every drunkard's best friend. Like, he was a ladies' man, he knew a lot of people from all these, all these bars, but it was really just kind of trying to get information out of them, because he was trained specifically as a spy in espionage. But then he was introduced to Menphilia when she was a little girl, and he felt somewhat responsible for her father's death during the parade where that gubu was going crazy and he probably feels like if he was just faster that he did something like if he just took care of the gubu right away then he might have saved Menphilia's father Waberton. Personally I don't think he should be feeling guilty for that. I mean it really wasn't his fault. It wasn't like he was part of the group who purposely released the gubu. Thancred wasn't a part of that, but he still feels responsible that he couldn't do more for Menphilia at that time. As we know, Menphilia was raised by Flamine, and later on in the game he explained that he would occasionally see Menphilia as she was growing up, like when she would come home from a long day from working in the mines, because she used to be a miner, and he always felt relief when he saw her. And he laments the fact that he didn't do more for her like he should have. Anyway, the point I'm trying to make here is, is that he felt a very strong sense of responsibility for Menphilia. And now that responsibility, that feeling of protectiveness has sort of passed over to Reem. Now this has been said several times already that Thancred is like a father figure to Reem. And in all honesty, in a lot of ways he is. He protected her, he raised her, he taught her everything she needs to know to survive. He taught her how to fight, how to take care of herself, how to think for herself. And he even gave her her new name of Reem, which means Blessing and Fae, so that alone should tell us just how much he cares about Reem. So I think that for Reem's sake, if nothing else, he would want to stay here and protect her because he had a lot of guilt, like a lot of regret that he wasn't there to really properly watch over Menphilia, that he didn't see her grow up like he really wanted to, and he regretted that. He regret that he wasn't there for her all the time like he should have been. And I don't think he's going to want to make that same mistake with Reen. I, I don't think he would want to go back to the source and 
remember this little girl and not know what's ever going to happen to her. I mean, he'll have the warrior of darkness continuing to go back and forth and he could ask about her well-being and how she's doing, but he won't be able to see that. And I think that's just going to eat him up. It's just going to be like another mistake with the original Menophilia. I mean, will his body just die when the connection's broken? And his soul just sort of stays here in the first and he'll just sort of remain there and when he dies, where will he go? I mean, will he be reincarnated like somewhere in the first? Will he, will the soul go back to the source? Because that's another thing, because Menphilia gave her life to protect this world. Like, he knows better than anyone that she sacrificed her life, like several lifetimes, just fighting and protecting this world for a hundred years, just waiting for that little miracle to show up that could pull the world back from the brinks. So what she did was when she stopped the flood of light, she bought the first time, time that it needed to kind of find out a way to save whatever was left of it. Because right now there's only Norfront. That's only the one continent that's left. Everything else is like a barren wasteland. Eventually, I do think that with the Eden quest line, this world will eventually thrive once again, but that's not going to happen right away. It's going to probably take decades of hard work. And I do picture that Rain would want to stay with Eden until that whole situation has been solved. And I don't think that's going to be resolved until patch 5.4 at the very least. Not only that, it's not like he has any family back in the source. Yastola, for example, she has her sister Yamitra back in the first, as well as Master Matoya. He doesn't really have too many people that he would consider family apart from the Scions. So out of everything, I think that it's more likely that Thancred's going to be remaining behind in the first. I'm not sure yet how that's going to work. And right now, they're just sort of setting it all up because it has been said that his stability with his body back in the first is the weakest right now. It's the most unstable. And he has the most reasons to want to stay behind. He wants to stay behind to protect and look after Ring. He wants to stay here and protect and look after the world that Menphilia sacrificed so much for. He probably feels like he doesn't want to leave this last connecting link to Menphilia. He doesn't have any like family back home apart from the Scions that would really want him back. I mean, he's got a lot of drinking buddies and a lot of fangirls, but not too many people that he would really consider to be family. Not only that, out of all the Scions, he spent the most time here in the first, so he probably feels like it's like a second home to him now. He feels a lot more comfortable. He spent five years traveling this realm, and so yeah, I think that by the time this whole story is wrapped up, and we have to say goodbye to Shadowbringers, and we're just setting up the storyline for the next expansion, probably Gollumal. I do think that Uriange, Alphino, and Alize are definitely the three who are going to be going back to the source. Kind of up in the air about Yastola. Like I said before, I think it's kind of 50-50 whether or not Yastola will want to go back. I think it really depends on what she really wants to do. Does she want to stay in the first or does she want to go back to the source? In the end, I do think it more likely that she will go back to the source because we can't have two people staying behind. I don't think that we can really afford that. But yeah, I do think that if there is a Scion that has to stay behind, it would probably be Thancred. And it's not like he's going to die. I mean, we will still be able to go and visit him whenever we want in the source. And I can totally see him and Reen kind of setting up expeditions to the Empty. Like once we take care of Eden and life is slowly starting to come back to the first, I can totally see them just going out there, leading these expeditions to kind of rediscover the world. And I can just see them like tr spending the rest of their days just traveling around and helping people and just helping to kind of reestablish life here on the first. And he'll totally be able to stay by her side for as long as possible. He'll be able to watch her grow up. He will probably be there to walk her down the aisle like when she meets somebody special and gets married and oh that's gonna be funny to see. So if it does happen, while I will be sad to see Thancred go, I do think that out of everyone, this is probably what was meant best for him. This is probably where everything he was doing was leading up to this point, and I don't think he will regret it. He'll definitely miss the source, like he'll miss his friends, he'll miss the scions. He'll still be able to see the Warrior of Darkness from time to time, but yeah, it will be sad to see him go, but at least we'll know he'll be happy and he won't be alone. 
That's the important thing. Anyway, guys, that was my discussion about which one of the Scions is most likely to stay behind. And what do you all think? Do you agree with my discussion about how I think that Thancred is most likely going to be staying behind in the first? Do you think that it's possibly the Astola? Or do you have some other wild card that I've never even thought of? Like maybe you have an idea of why Oriandre would want to stay behind or why one of the twins would want to stay behind. I'm open to all ideas. I really want to see what you all think. Just drop your theories down below. Let me know what you think and if you have any suggestions or requests about a future discussions or predictions video. So until next time, I wish you all a good day and I'll be seeing you sometime in the Nudie Finder most likely. So until then, bye bye.